we continue looking at Spark SQL. And we left off last time. We had managed to do a filter on our data to get high temperatures and low temperatures. And we had to introduce the concept of a column because the filter for our data frame works very differently than the filter for the RDD. And it's this difference that really allows the Spark SQL engine to do more optimization because I'm not passing it an arbitrary function. I am passing it a comparison where Spark, the library, can look at the things that I'm comparing and potentially do optimizations on that. Now what I'd really like to do here is to get an average temperature. So how do I do that? Well, this took me down to a table that only has maxes and another table that only has mins. I'm printing out the T max here. And what I want to do is I want to find both the max and the min for all situations where I have the same station ID and the same date. And if you're familiar with database operations, then you know that this is something you do with joins. And there are a number of joins that are available for data frames. Uh, there's actually a join with, which is part of the experimental API. Uh, but there are these multiple join methods. The top of the data set API shows you actually how you can potentially use joins. This uses a version where you are providing a column that specifies what the join should be done on. That is this version and these two versions here uh, where you give it a, a column. Now the downside of this is that it will give you a resulting table that has all the columns from both tables. In our case, we have both, col both tables have a column named SID. If instead you use these versions that have using column, it will, in fact, there are three versions here, either if you're joining on one column or jo joining on multiple columns, then you will only get one column for the things that are being uh, joined on. Okay, so we could then, instead of displaying this here, we could make a combined temps 2017 is equal to, I want to take my Tmax 2017 and I want to join it with our Tmin 2017. And I guess I could show you what would happen if we did this in the way that we don't want to. Um, and that would be, here I want to compare the two SIDs. Unfortunately, it really doesn't make sense for me to compare the columns like that. This is one of these situations where I really have to say I want to compare something from one data set to the other. So I'd have to say Tmax 2017, its SID needs to be equal to tmin 2017's SID and tmax's tmax 2017's date is equal to tmin 2017's date and there we have this now uh, we could show this. I've tried this. It doesn't work. Uh, and the reason is because, once again, this is a large data file. Uh, if we actually look at it, instead of displaying it this way, if I look at it here, this is close to a gigabyte. And I'm currently running this, and of course you're like, well, but Spark is intended for big data. Yes, it is. But I'm running this in the local. Okay, so this is a fairly minimal configuration. I'm not sending this off to some big cluster. We could, I will have a video at some point where I talk about sending these things off to a big cluster. Indeed, maybe that should be in this video series now that we actually have a data set big enough to make that work. Instead, I need to make these smaller. Now, once again, if you're familiar with SQL, there is a command called limit where you can limit the number of data elements and it turns out this will run with 10,000, but it runs a little bit faster if I only do 
1,000. That's enough for me to get the point across, I believe, and we don't want to have this take too long as we run it. So here we're doing the join. We've required that two columns be equal, and so we should get something out that is a table that has both maximum and minimum temperatures, uh, but maybe they're not, you know, we're gonna see there are some issues with doing what we've done so far, as soon as the whole thing finishes processing. Okay, so there we go. As you can see, there's two columns for SID, there's two columns for date, and they're always equal. That's kind of a pain. Also, I have one column that's always Tmax, another column that's always Tmin, and really all I want here are these values. And so we want to fix this, and there are a number of things to fix. So first off, instead of using this form, I am just, I am going to use the form where I give it a sequence, of strings. And so by doing this, if I were to run it again, which I'm not going to, we'd get one column of SID, one column of date, and then two for M value, uh, M type and value. Okay. So that gets us part of the way there. The other thing that I'd like to do is to make it so, first off, I don't need the M types anymore, but I would like the values to be properly named. Okay. So what I'm going to do on our original the T max and T min is I am going to do two things. I'm going to drop out one column, and that would be the column for M type. I got two T's in there. I'll do that for both of them. And then I also want to say with a column renamed and take the value column, and in this case, I want to call that value column, I'll just call it Tmax, and in the other case, I want to call it Tmin. Okay. Let's see what that join looks like. Once again, unfortunately, this is not a remarkably fast operation on just a local cluster. It doesn't help that I already have a whole bunch of stuff running on this computer at the same time. Otherwise, we'd probably go a bit faster. Obviously, I could limit it even more, but I have reasons why I'd like to actually go the other direction. Okay, this is more what we want. Okay, so this is a, is a happy table that has our SID, our date, our Tmax, and our Tmin. Of course, what I'd really like to have is an average temperature. And I can get that out by doing a select. Okay, so this joins things up. I'll do this in a separate step. So val average temp of 2017 is our combine temps and I'm going to select and I get to pass it multiple columns here. So the first two columns that I want are just the station ID and the date. I'm going to preserve those. And then the other thing that I want is the average of the Tmax and the Tmin, which are two separate columns. So I'm going to take Tmax plus team in and divide it by two. And thanks to the operators that exist on columns, that is well defined. And we'll do one last run for this video so we can see if this actually gives us the, the average. Something to note, this join, because I didn't pass it, there is an option where you, I can pass another argument where I could specify an outer join. This join by default is an inner join. 
And so anything that wasn't in both data sets gets thrown away. And that's exactly what I want. It might be that some of these stations, there are days where they only reported a max temperature, or only reported a min temperature. I can't get the average for those days. Okay, so I have to look for only the days where a given station reports both a T max and a T min, and the inner join is what gives me that behavior. Okay, so here we go. That is our result for average temperatures. Uh, it might be nice to rename that column uh, so that we can refer to it more easily. But other than that, we have a fairly good result. We will uh, come back and look at how we could read in our other data file so that then we can combine that other data file with this to get location information and then do something like plot uh, globally the, the weather stations.